everyone, my name is Leah. I'm coordinator of Thinkerspace at Discovery Place Science. Today we're going to be talking about energy. Energy is all around us, and so today we're going to be talking about different types of, and forms of energy. We're going to be talking about the first law of thermodynamics, how energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. And we're also going to talk about um, how energy transforms from one uh, form to another in real life examples like catapults, wind turbines, and much more. Let's get started. So energy is the ability to do work. Getting out of bed this morning, I had to use my body's chemical energy, converted into kinetic energy, to get out of bed and go downstairs and make breakfast. On the stove, I had to use electrical energy and then thermal energy to heat up food for breakfast. And then after eating that food, it was chemical energy transformed into kinetic energy for me to go outside and take my dogs for a walk. So like I said, energy is all around us in lots of different forms. So there's a couple of different types of energy that we're going to be talking about today. Chemical energy, like when I digest food to then change into energy that I can use to move my body, breathe, uh, blink, talk. We also have thermal or heat energy, like if we're heating something up on a stove, Yes, the stove is using electrical energy, but that red hot uh, burner is using thermal energy to then heat something up. We also have radiant or light energy, like from the sun, um, that we can use to power things. We also have nuclear energy, like at nuclear power plants, where they are using uh, power from atoms. We also have gravitational energy, um, which depends on something's position. It's also called gravitational potential energy. So this isn't doing something, it's just sitting there, but it has potential energy uh, to do something, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But depending on its position, it's gonna have different amounts of gravitational potential energy. We also have sound energy. Um, so like when we talk, we can feel our, our throat, those vibrations are energy. Or when we have the speakers on really loud, we can feel those vibrations, right? Movement is going on, there's energy. We also have electrical energy, which we are more familiar with, where we have the movement of electrons uh, generating electricity that we can use to power our homes, houses, uh, laptops, things like that. Uh, and then lastly, we have mechanical or energy of motion. Um, so we said Apple, we have gravitational potential energy, energy in motion. So let's talk a little bit more about those different forms. So with all of our different forms of energy, uh, they kind of categorize or fall under two types of energy. We have kinetic energy and we have potential energy. And if you haven't heard of those before, potential energy is stored energy. So for the most part, potential energy doesn't look like it's doing anything. So like if I had this apple here, does it have energy? It may not look like it, but right now um, the apple has stored potential energy. So potential energy is stored energy. It doesn't look like it's doing anything, but it has the potential to do something. And that potential energy depends on its position, right? Does it have more potential energy if it's lower, more potential energy if it's higher, right? So kinetic energy, if we put um, motion into the system, kinetic energy is energy of motion. So if this falls off the table or if I let it go, right, it falls. So energy in motion is kinetic energy and energy that is stored is potential energy. With the different forms that we talked about, chemical, uh, radiant, nuclear, all of those fall under either kinetic or potential energy. So the potential energy forms would be the ones like chemical, nuclear, uh, gravitational, um, and also motion, right? Sometimes motion's at rest and sometimes motion is in motion. Um, the kinetic forms would be uh, electrical, right? We have those electrons moving around, so we have movement. We also have radiant, so those rays from the sun. Uh, thermal, so those uh, molecules are heating up when we see steam. Uh, and then we also have sound, which again, we have those vibrations, the movement. So all of those are under kinetic energy. So when we're talking about potential and kinetic energy, how do we calculate how much potential or kinetic energy something has? Well, with potential energy, uh, stored energy, right? Uh, three things have to be considered. We need to take into consideration its height because its position matters. We also need to take into consideration um, gravity, right? So there's actually something called gravitational acceleration, which depending on sea level, right? So your distance from the center of the earth, uh, your gravity, your gravitational acceleration is gonna be different at sea level than if you were say up on a mountain. 
So at sea level, that's uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, which just gets plugged into the formula. Um, so height, gravitational acceleration, and also mass. So the volume and weight of that object. And if we multiply those things together, we will get something's potential energy, which is gonna be different, again, depending on its position, and that's stored energy. So to calculate kinetic energy, it's a little bit different because instead of an object at rest, right, we have an object in motion. So for kinetic energy, we calculate that using mass, so it's volume and weight, multiplied by its velocity, or its speed in a given direction. So the formula for kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared divided by a two. So why does all of this matter, right? Kinetic potential energy. Well, we said that energy is all around us, right? But what happens to energy after we use it? Does it just go away, right? After I eat an apple, does it just disappear? No, right? So energy transfers from one form to another. Energy cannot be created out of nowhere and energy can't be destroyed. It just transforms from another form to another. Um, and this is known as the first law of thermodynamics or the law of conservation of energy that we can't create or destroy um, energy. It can only be transferred. So let's look at a couple of different examples of how energy transforms from a form to another. So the first example that I have is using mechanical or kinetic energy, so energy in motion, to transform into electrical energy that we can use to power something. I have a hand generator, which we will be using our kinetic energy, okay, to power. And that will then uh, create some voltage to line up our chip here, and it's gonna do something pretty cool. All right, so we have our music chip slash voltmeter hooked up to our hand crank over here, where we can take mechanical energy, energy in motion, and use that to turn to electrical energy to power our little guy here. So if I crank this, we can see that it's lighting up. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but three of those LEDs are lighting up, which means I'm making about six volts. Okay, so now that I know that I can light this up, let's see if I can get the music function to play. And we can see that if I go slower, the music slows down, because maybe it's not getting enough energy, electricity. And if I go faster, it can play. Mechanical, kinetic energy into electrical energy. So in this next setup, we're gonna have a fan, which is gonna be blowing wind kinetic energy onto a wind turbine that will then spin and collect that kinetic energy and transform it into electrical energy to be able to power something on. So we have a fan blowing onto my wind turbine. That wind turbine is spinning. That spinning is turning a motor inside of this turbine setup, which is then going through the wires. And through the wires is going to my voltmeter. And that voltmeter is going to collect and tell us how much electricity or how much voltage the fan is putting into the wind turbine. I can then take these wires off of my voltage meter. We don't need to record the voltage anymore. We know how much is being collected. And so I can connect both of those to an LED. We have wind kinetic energy powering our light bulb. So we have kinetic to electrical energy. In this next demonstration, we're gonna be showing how we can take batteries or chemical energy convert that into electrical energy, which then will give off wind energy to push something in a direction. Let's check it out. All right, so here I have my airboat car. We can see that when I flip the switch on, it turns on, right? So the batteries inside of the bottom compartment are turning chemical energy into electrical energy. That electrical energy is allowing this fan to spin. If I let go of my airboat car, that spinning fan, is gonna create some kinetic energy. It's blowing in one direction, which is gonna push against the air and send it off in the other direction. So we have chemical to electrical to kinetic energy transformations. The last demonstration I wanna show you guys has to do with catapults. Catapults are fun, catapults are exciting, and catapults are pretty easy to make at home. But what kind of energy goes into how catapults work? Well, 
we have mechanical energy, right? So energy of motion. We have potential and kinetic energy in our catapult system. Let's take a look at how it works. So in our catapult, we can see that as I pull back that beam, we have a lot of stored energy. As I hold on to it, it's not doing anything, but it has the potential to do something when I release it. When I do release it, all that potential energy changes into kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy, as a reminder, is energy of motion. Depending on how far back I pull that beam, we have different amounts of potential energy. We can see that as I pull back the catapult beam, that rubber band stretches, right? And the more that it stretches, the more energy we're putting into the system. So when I pull back the beam all the way, it can fly the furthest. If I pull back the beam a little bit, it doesn't have as much energy put into the system, so it only flies a little bit. So in our catapult system, we have both kinetic and potential energy. Potential energy stored when I pull back the beam and hold it, and kinetic energy, energy of motion, when I release it and it goes flying. So this is a fun experiment that you can do at home where you can see firsthand how we can transform one form of energy to another. We're gonna see a change from chemical energy, which is potential, to kinetic energy, energy in motion. All right, so for our experiment, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need vinegar, which I've measured out two tablespoons into my container here. You can use any container you want, but we do need something that's going to um, seal this, okay? But we don't want something that's twist closed, so you can't use a water bottle that has a twist seal. You want something that's gonna pop off because our chemical reaction is gonna create gas and that gas is gonna to wanna to go somewhere. So you don't wanna use something that seals, okay? It's not safe. So I have this cork here. So if you have a cork around or if you have something that has a pop top, like an old film case or um, like a medicine bottle, um, you can use that. Has to be a pop top though, okay? Then I have baking soda, which I am going to measure out a half tablespoon. And I've made a little pouch here where I've put my one tablespoon of baking soda into paper towel, or you can use toilet paper, but this is just gonna create a delayed release so that as soon as I put it into here, it's not gonna immediately react, okay? We want it to be a slow reaction so we have time to put our cork top on, okay? So the vinegar has to absorb through the paper towel before it reacts with the baking soda, and then it will react. So we're gonna quickly put this in. I think I maybe made it too big. That's why it's better to use a bigger container. Okay. And then as soon as it falls in, we're going to seal it up. It happens so quick, even with my delayed release. All right. Woo! And as long as that reaction is happening, so we have chemical energy transforming into kinetic energy to have our pop top off. As long as our reaction is still happening, we can keep taking that top and pop it on there because that gas is still being created so we can keep having our kinetic energy transformation from our uh, chemical energy. Energy. And that concludes our energy talk for today. We talked about chemical, thermal, or heat energy, radiant or light energy, nuclear, gravitational, sound, electrical and mechanical kinetic energy and how they all fit into either potential stored energy or kinetic energy in motion types of energy. I leave you with a challenge to look around your house and see what different things are putting out different forms of energy. Are they chemical? Are they electrical? Do you have something that is putting off sound energy? So if you'd like, you can comment below and let us know what different types of energy you found and the different objects around your house. Remember, some objects might be showing more than one, like a light bulb, for example, or a lamp. It's plugged into the wall, so it's giving off electrical energy, or it's using electrical energy. But that light might be giving off heat energy or light energy. If you have any questions about what we talked about today, feel free to also leave those in the comments below and we'll get back to you. You can also check out more of our at-home science videos and blogs on our Discovery Place website. And if you'd like to build your own catapult at home, you can check out our link below so that you can check out our step-by-step -step guide on how to build your own catapult from everyday materials at home. I'll see you guys next time.